Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you guys for tuning in. We are back, and this is episode 10. It was kind of a rhyme, by the way. As always, I am Kaz. And I'm Queen. And this is episode 10 of According to Kaz and Queen. And we want to thank you guys for tuning in and thank those of you who are returning uh, viewers and returning listeners. And if you are a first-time viewer and a first-time Listener, of course, you can follow According to Kai's and Queen on all social media platforms, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. You can also follow us on the YouTube page. And if you are viewing us right now, it's going to be right there under my finger. All right. So make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Of course, if you're listening to us uh, on a streaming service right now, you didn't see that graphic. That's just for the people who are you know, watching on YouTube. <laughs> but of course, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and you can follow us on all streaming platforms. You can hear us on Spotify. You can hear us on uh, Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts. We're on Amazon Music as well. So you can hear us or you can watch our bright, shiny faces if you prefer. All right. And we appreciate you for staying with us. This is a bit of a milestone for us. We are on episode 10 and we've uh, continuously, Yay. yeah, trying to bring you content every week consistently at the top of the week, man. Uh, these are conversations that happen between a husband and wife in the comfort and the privacy of our own home uh, that we find amusing and informative. And we want to bring it to you guys as well, the stuff that we talk about inside of our home. So we're going to get right into it, man. Uh, we got to talk about Pea Valley. Uh, that's what we've been talking about for the past couple of days in our home. Uh, for those of you who have not seen the season finale of uh, season two, which is episode 10 of season two called Mississippi Rule of P Valley. Uh, spoiler alert, there will be spoilers in this discussion as we move forward. Uh, you know, we always try to talk about something that's going on in, in popular culture and then kind of just go from there. But uh, we have been avid watchers of P Valley uh, for this season. And we got to talk about this season finale. We got to talk about, you know, season two of P-Valley. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I did not begin watching P-Valley and getting into P-Valley uh, when it first became uh, a phenomenon uh, in, in viewing. Uh, I did not watch season one at all until after season one was over. I mean, uh, we do that with a lot of shows. Yeah, we do do that with a lot of shows. Uh, I was really content at first with not watching P Valley. I was I was kind of good on it. Uh, you know, even though you know, both my wife and I have a extreme fondness for strippers. Uh, we dig them, and uh, any shows that we can see strippers on, we'll watch it. But I wasn't really that interested in watching P Valley at first. It was set in Mississippi. Usually, I try to follow stuff that's set in Mississippi, in the fictional town of Chuckalisa, uh, Mississippi. Um, and we stumbled upon it. And uh, I don't know if it was you or me that started watching it uh, at first. Um, I, I think we both got about ready for it around the same time. Yeah, so I think we stumbled upon it. You know, I might have stumbled in and she was watching it or she might have walked in and I was watching it. Uh, it was well after season one was over with because season two almost kind of started a little bit after we finished up on season one but started watching season one sat down i gotta tell you uh right off the bat i got intrigued and uh, as my wife will attest i think for both of us you know we have certain things that might draw us into particular shows uh you know we were late watching scandal uh you know, we were kind of right at the beginning of uh, How I Got Away with Murder. But yeah. that's because of Scandal. Yeah, yeah, that was because of Scandal leading it in. But uh, I don't think I started watching Scandal. It was like, what, the last couple of years, last yeah. couple of seasons. So I missed like three seasons of Scandal. Immediately had me in a chokehold the moment that I saw it. Uh, and P Valley was the same way. I was intrigued. Uh, I was entertained. Uh, you know, being in the music business, you know, anytime you see the story of a struggling rapper in a small Mississippi town, that's, you know, kind of a story that I kind of lived a little bit, even though Jackson is not really, you know, according to, you know, the folks in Chuck Elisa, uh, Jackson is, is the big town if you go into town, if you're yeah. going, to, going to Jackson. But I uh, started watching season one, got intrigued, uh, stuck in. Uh, we binge watched all of season one. And we were hooked and started with season two. And here we are at the season finale. 
of uh, season two, episode 10, Mississippi Rules. So, uh, you know, Queen, you know, just starting right off the bat, you know, your assessment of season two, you know, some of the highlights and, you know, how do you think uh, the season finale wrapped up season two? Um, I think they did a real good job uh, for the season finale as it goes toward keeping people on their on the edge of their seats and awaiting season three. I yeah, think they did yeah. a really good job. Yeah, a really good job at that. I guess the biggest takeaway for me was the Keyshawn story. Yeah, yeah. And um, what I'm seeing online is troubling for me, just troubling for me. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of people having a lot of, you know, not having remorse for Keyshawn and, you know, feeling like she was stupid and all that. Let's 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 just clarify mm -hmm. that she did mess the entire plan up. Like she messed the entire plan up. There was no reason at all for her to handle the plan and she the way she handled it. I can get the frustration with it with the people who have bought into that story and want to see it happen a different way. But the 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 whole the the problem with me the problem for me is the idea that people have that she should have left and why did she stay and she was stupid for staying that bothers me when I hear women say things like that because I am a survivor of mm -hmm. domestic violence mm -hmm. and I'm sure that that was would have been said about me if I had the nerve and courage to tell anybody I didn't right. I suffered it alone it and. Sounds. Maybe there were a couple of people who saw him do it, but they did nothing. Right. So, uh, and that was years. Like, if, if let them tell it, I should have left after the very first hit, which was, <laughs> that was probably two months into our relationship. Wow. And then it didn't happen again until four years later. So... It's really dangerous to blame the victim. You haven't walked in their shoes. You don't know what they're going through. And a lot of times, and this is what I think is relevant to Keyshawn, um, that was her life. That was the safety that she built around her because she didn't have safety in her home. She didn't have that. So she was trying to find that. And she built it in this guy who was an incredible creep. Uh, she built it jump. in him. Even right. in the backstory, from the jump. Yeah, and Free. she learned that, I think she thought that's what love was, mm -hmm. what relationships was. Mm -hmm. Then she started having children. That makes it very difficult for someone who doesn't know what life outside of that is like right. to create that life, right. which is why Haley coming to her, telling her this story was so significant and so powerful. Because in the end, the, the, the T was, she did the, the same thing she was telling Keyshawn to do. Right. That's how she got there. That's how she got there. Right. And that is her pattern. She knows this pattern. She knows it well. She gave the girl the game. Mm -hmm. Now, being disappointed in her for not following that, that's, you know, typical for right. naivete. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. thinking that things aren't as big as they are. And that's what her mistake was. She underestimated that stepmama of hers and that stepsister of hers. Mm -hmm. And yep. I really wish she would go back and get them. Like, go get the dude for sure. But don't, if you're sending Diamond, which, what's happening with Diamond? But if you're sending somebody to get the dude, don't let them miss the mama, the stepmama house too. Get her too. Yeah, I, I think there's some, some comeback for all of them. I mean, you know, and this is completely entertainment, guys. Of course, you know, we watch these shows. And uh, from all the way back as far as Scandal is concerned and uh, how I got away with murder and what what, what else have we watched here recently? Uh, all of 50 Cent stuff. Yeah. Uh, all of the power shows uh, in the power universe, BMF. Uh, but it started off with Scandal. I didn't like BMF. I fell off of that one after about the third. Well, you know, you got you to gotta know the story of Big Meech. Uh, you know, I shouldn't BMF have to know the story of Big Meech. I mean, you should. I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't Why have, you have to? to. Because it's a, it's a storyline. You're supposed to draw me in off of the same thing you draw me in off of everything else. I'm drawn I to good storylines. I think you give another chance. Possibly. Let's go back in. And we'll revisit that. But, you know, Scandal set the tone for me, you know, on a lot of these shows. Uh, you know, if you give me a moment's problem, you give me any type of issues whatsoever, if you get in the way, 
dead. We're gonna kill you. That's it. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about it. Uh, it's just nothing, you know, nothing to discuss. Uh, anytime that you present any type of obstacle or, you know, you wronged us in any way, just off them. That's you know it. where that was really prevalent was in Claws. Yeah. They killed everybody. That was another show. <laughs> Claws. Like, Claws, you know. they killed everybody. And mind you, again, this is for entertainment purposes, ladies and gentlemen, that, that are watching us. But, uh, yeah, when, when the comeback comes back, uh, if Diamond gets out of the predicament that he's in, you know, and, and something does happen to Keyshawn's uh, baby daddy, uh, something needs to happen to the stepmom uh, because she was complicit and I think she knew exactly what was happening. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, when I saw Keyshawn pull up in that parking lot, uh, which was uh, Headland and Delow, by the way, which is in East Point, Atlanta, uh, if y'all are familiar with uh, Outkast and uh, any of the Dungeon family. That scene was shot in Atlanta, even though they supposed to be in Mississippi. One, well, he one was day. already on tour. He was already on tour, but if they was in Atlanta, then that means Keyshawn was in Atlanta. Well, maybe that's where the mama stay. Maybe that's know. why she left the mama with him. Maybe. Maybe that's the case. I mean, he left them with the mama. I'm not exactly sure. Because uh, that has to be, there. that would be good, because that would make sense. She didn't have nobody else to keep him. Because I'm like, girl, why you didn't take her down I, to the I think, bank? I think she could have left her with Uncle Clifford. She could have left them Well, with, if she was uh, on her way already out of Mississippi and into Atlanta, and that's where the stepmama stays, then she didn't have no choice. I mean, I guess. I, that I, wasn't, well, that I, wasn't real clear, but I'm hoping that that's what the case she was. She had brought those kids, according to Mercedes later on in the show, she had brought those kids to the strip club numerous times. Right, which yeah. is which is my argument, which is why if she was still in Chuckaloosa, she would have took the kids there. No, I don't think the, the stepmom and them are not in Atlanta. The stepmom and them are in Mississippi. How you know that? They're from the backstory. Did the backstory ever say that they was in Mississippi? Yeah. The backstory was in Mississippi. That's where she was high school at. That's where she met the she met the baby daddy at. All of that was in Chuckaloosa. All of that. I, I don't know that that's it. That is the case. I don't know that they spelt that out in those terms. She they was, talked about where she went to school. They talked about her being in high school. She none of the people there except for Derek are in her life right now. So it's, it's it, to me it seems possible that she was not in Mississippi. In so, high school. so how did Derek end up going to get the kids in that short period of time? Because he went to pick the kids up. Well, we don't know how long that was. How do we know how long that was? All I know is is that I mean we'll go back and take that part out. If y'all are watching, uh, chime you know, in. Chime in. If we miss something, you know, we miss something. But when I'm I trying to that, find a reason that Keyshawn left them children with that stepmom because, because that just it, don't make no it, sense. I mean, it had to go with the story because you got to keep the story going. Yeah, but we're not stupid. Like, don't make me feel stupid for watching your show. Some things need to be very clear. Well, how did, how she why she leave them children with that woman? Because she trusts where well, she left them with her sister. Why she leave him there, period, around the woman? The woman was a problem for her when she was a well, child. Well, here's the thing. If you saw the interaction between the sister and the mama, the sister was looking at Keyshawn. Clearly, she was looking her, at her like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, the, like, the, like the jig was up. So the mother clearly somewhere in there, and we're probably going to see this in season three, the mother probably interrogated the sister. The sister ended up dropping dime, and the mama called the baby daddy up because she knew that that was going to cause Keyshawn to have to stay. The mother, the stepmother, I think, is in a position where she is trapped as well, and I don't think she wanted Keyshawn to be able to leave her situation. I think Keyshawn was getting ready to leave and go and have her life. I think the stepmom, who is already feeling trapped being with Keyshawn's dad, as you noticed from the backstory of what was happening, because Keyshawn... Because uh, the stepmom was crying when Keyshawn came into the house from the prom or whatever the case is. I think she's jealous of Keyshawn. I think we've established that fact. And I think she was trying to keep Keyshawn around. I think that was her intent to kind of just kind of screw her over. All I know is, is that when I saw her pull up to Lil' Murder in that parking lot, my first thought was, why are you still here? Why are you not gone? I didn't see her do anything that the children couldn't have been in the car with her to do. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing. Just to pick the money up from Little Murder? If that has to be one of the reasons why the story keeps going, I guess that's it. But, I mean, you know, looking at it from our vantage point, and I think everybody else is having a problem with it, uh, there's no reason why you should have let those kids out of your sight. Well, I want the writers of P-Valley 
to go into the dungeon or wherever they do their writing at, and I need them to clear all these holes up in season three. Because if they don't, that's going to be a problem for me. I can't watch a show that leave these holes like that. Well, I'm going to tell you, there have, this has happened to a lot of shows. So, you know, we're hoping that P-Valley does get, you know, renewed for season three. Uh, they did leave some cliffhangers at the end, a lot of them. Uh, one thing that's not a cliffhanger in the show is uh, Little Murder and Uncle Clifford. That's one thing that's not a cliffhanger. Uh, Little Murder came out and confessed his love openly for Uncle Clifford at the, at the tank. In front of a small audience, it wasn't to the world. Framily. Framily. It wasn't, it wasn't public, Framily. but that was a big deal. It was a big deal. It was a big deal and for him. And it wasn't like nobody in there was going to keep their mouth shut. You know immediately when them folks in there saw that, you know immediately that word was going to spread. Yeah, like you had that front row of people that were watching them. Those are the ones who are not going to say anything. Mercedes and... Uh, Ernestine. That's about with it. With that row right behind it. Oh, yeah, all of them. And everybody up. Everybody in the back. Baby, that thing gonna get out. That teenager. Maybe not. Who knows? I don't know how they do in Chuckaloosa. That, teen, that teenager Chuckaloosa. was in there, too. Mercedes' daughter was in there. You know they was texting immediately. They might have took some pictures. So there's speculation online. I saw that uh, the little girl mm -hmm. and Maine seemed familiar with each other. I, I don't know if there was familiarity. She was enamored with him when she saw him and the mama Mercedes being fast herself at one time picked up on it and made her run off. That could yeah, have but the speculation online is that and it could you know, you know how people just get hit get something to go to run it with mm -hmm. it. But I didn't even consider it. But uh that he is possibly the father of her child. He did say, Oh, that's your little girl and I thought to myself that's, ain't that what she said when she walked up to you? Yeah. So it was like, oh, that's your little girl. Which would be horrible because that's a, a grown man. And Mercedes, but he was in jail. Like when did she get pregnant? Because oh, right. he was in jail. That's right. he was in jail. And, but that's Mercedes right. keeps making reference to the fact that she thinks she grown. Like she keeps saying that. She's going to be selling weed in a minute. She, she thinks she grown. And I think that's to kind of go and put it out there that she's out. She's going to be something. In season three, she's gonna be. There's gonna be something there. Yeah. I mean, I think from an interaction with Maine, uh, I think, I don't know. I don't know if she's gonna try to go back behind her mom and and holler at him or whatever the case is. Uh, I don't know. I would like for for them to do a better job on the gang colors. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they can't use real gang colors. I mean, you know, you can't use red and blue. I get it. Uh, you know, several. You know, Vice Lord Bloods. Crips, GDs. I mean, I know red and blue has been used. I know in some areas there are a lot of different colors. I just don't think the yellow is as gangster as you want to get it uh, for Mississippi. I'm just not exactly sure. Everything bright yellow. That doesn't indicate... Well, it's yellow and blue. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, and that's, you know, yellow and blue. Those are like a football team of colors, a Sigma Gamma Rose, blue and Blue and gold. It doesn't, you know, I'm not intimidated. If I see a bunch of dudes and then he had it tied around his neck like a like a, a, a scarf, you know, I don't know if I, I see a dude with a yellow scarf on. I don't know if I'm I i did not real I don't maybe I'm not watching this show closely enough, but I didn't realize that um Lil Murder was in a gang. Yeah, he's in the other gang. I didn't realize that the I thought this boy was rocking Red, black, and green, and he was actually rocking red and heel -top, green heel side hustlers, as hustlers. a gang color. Yes. Had no idea. Well, if you notice, with Teak, Teak always had those colors on, for the most part. He yeah, always had those colors didn't on. Didn't notice. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was making a revolutionary statement, and he's in a gang. You notice, uh, did you see the conversation they had in the club when Teak first got out, and it was... They gang against the other gang, and I think at that time, I think them dudes had yellow on then. Yeah, not that I think about it, but they had a confrontation in the club when Teak first got out of jail and got back, and they brought him on with security. That was a you know a confrontation there, a little gang confrontation, uh, and they had the colors on at that point, uh, you know. And I could rock with you know red and green, or red, black, and green, you know. As it ain't red, black, and green. It's red and green. Red and green. You know, I can rock that. Uh, you know, the yellow on mine, it was just so outstanding, so bright on your neck. 
You know what I'm saying? When you see him coming, like, you can't even be covert. Like, we can't, you know, we can't ambush you. Because, you, you know, you're going to see us I coming. I think they want you to see him coming. Well, it's not, it doesn't make good for good ambushes, for good gang ambushes, if you and yellow. No, I don't think gangs do a lot of ambushing. I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe not. You know, I remember gangs in New York, like Leonardo DiCaprio, maybe the 1800s, they did some ambushing. Maybe they don't do ambushing now. Maybe. Well, you know, the Satan's Knights, when they recruited JJ on Good Times, they ambushed. They didn't have colors the either. The Warlords. Well, they had a jacket. They had a delt on it. <laughs> it's one of my favorite Good Times episodes, by the way. If you haven't watched it, go back and Watch it when JJ joins the uh, the Satan's Knights. They have a gang war with the warlords in Chicago. Uh, so yeah, there's been gang incidents on TV for a really, really long time. But where do you think Lil Murder and Uncle Clifford go in season three? I saw somebody that I follow on social media who was like, man, Clifford and Lil Murder really love each other. The dialogue that they were having between the two of them really came off as two people that were really actually caring and having love for one another and you know him giving up you know his ability to go on tour with tina snow aka meg the stallion uh you know made a statement where do you think that goes in the next season i don't know i mean i guess we'll see more of them falling in love i think they was in love clearly i, I mean it's evident that little murder is for sure for sure yeah. I'm I think that Uncle Clifford is a bit afraid and timid about it because he's so young and he doesn't want the responsibility of what this man does with his life based on how mm -hmm. he feels for him mm -hmm. because I'm forty and I know what I want and I know what I'm finna do. I'm at the paint. That's all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I ain't going nowhere. So he sees a brighter future. Right. For Lil right. Murder, he doesn't want the responsibility of him being a part of what Little Murder decides to do with his future, which is just a really unselfish way to live, but it's but it's also coming from a selfish place because he's actually trying to stay in a comfortable spot. Protect himself, really. To protect himself. Little Murder said that. Yeah, he was trying to protect himself. Yeah, he doesn't want to chance it. Right. He knows what his life is, and he doesn't want to risk falling in love and having all these different emotions and this newness and this depending on other people and all like your life is gonna completely change. But mm -hmm. they've been kind of staying together and, you know, um exploring things kinda together. So it's I th I think it'll be interesting to see, but that's gonna lose a lot of the intrigue. So something's going to have to happen to keep the intrigue there. Yeah, because you wonder what happens if you're thinking about present time and you're thinking about, you know, uh, a, a hip-hop artist on the rise like Lil Murder is on the show. And what would happen, you know, if they came out publicly as, you know, being in a gay relationship or being gay right now in reality, in real time. So this is playing out in front of us. How was that going to play out? on this show going forward. And I think it's something to maybe look at. Then it also speaks to the small town mentality and the pool of the small town. We talked about that before of you growing up in this town and everything is comfortable to you and being scared sometimes to branch out. Chuck Elisa is pulling him back in as much as, cause you know, he could possibly have a murder charge on his head. He killed somebody. He gonna be in the Seven same. Seven pounds of pressure. Seven pounds of pressure. He actually killed somebody, and the people that are his crew are still in the town, and know that he did it, and gonna be gunning for him. And yet, he's deciding to stick around. I don't know, think we'll hear anything else about that. Not in season three, but I think that the people who are family, Uncle Clifford's folks. Mm -hmm. Those people are going to be fine with Lil Murder being gay. They're not going right. to have no problem with it at all. Right. It's going to be the people who follow Lil Murder right. that have the issue. And the gang, maybe, that has the issue. But they seem to know already. Seem to know. I mean, they, they see, call see, him see, all yeah. the words that you could possibly call yes. him already. So yeah. they seem to know. And I think that they're going to just kind of make him into this uh, killer, for lack of a better word, 
and that will be the credibility that he needs to sway any type of negativity that comes his way mm. for his sexuality. I don't know that is something to uh to see. Now I will say in all the shows that we watched, you know, when people have killed people, at some point, you know, it always does come around, whether it's in the next season or the season after, somebody finds out. It's their claws where they just dumped them in the river with the alligators and that was that. They did. Well that was <laughs> any significant you know, characters at times that got killed on claws? Well, uh, not not really. I mean, it, towards the end, yeah. But throughout the show, no, they weren't that significant. They yeah. came in through the season. It was about them that season, and they would kill them by the end of the season. Right. And then they just move on. Right, right. There but, was nobody coming into town looking for them. It was no, there was really no repercussions on that. And so, I can dig that, actually. I liked to wrap the season up with, with like that. You know, they did that on Luke Cage, too. Yeah. Just have your person, your villain this season. Next season, have another villain. Let's yeah. keep it moving. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe some people kind of sprinkle in here and there. So we got Diamond at the end uh, there who was clearly on his way possibly to go kill uh, Keyshawn's baby daddy after she called him from jail and uh, recited a a poem or a lullaby to him while you in jail on the phone. That had to be a secret code. Because it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I think, you know, they had had that discussion before. So I think she was kind of saying it to him because he knew exactly what was happening. It was part of the story, I guess, that, that, you know, old girl was telling him when she was trying to help her to get away. I'm just saying, I'm in jail. I'm on this public phone here. You know, who knows who needs to use this phone? You know, I, I'm stuck in here. Do you have a time and a luxury to be poetic when you're trying to deliver the message at the time? Oh, she did it. It did, and he knew what was happening. Uh, he got through in the trunk by a big bone who everyone, I think, you know, that I saw, you know, predicted that she was going to be trouble mm -hmm. from, you know, the minute this whole season jumped off. From the conversation at the motorcycle. Yep, from the conversation I, I knew she the was going to be a problem. Yep. yep. But they... She couldn't dance. When she couldn't dance with that body off the top, I knew it was a problem. I don't really like how they did Diamond this time. He was a different kind of character last season. He was stronger. This one, he seemed kind of aloof and displaced and not really there. They showed, you know, clippings of a war. Yeah. So yeah. I guess he PTSD. has, he, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but that's new. That's brand new. And they waited until the last episode to share yeah. that. Mm -hmm. In the first beginning of the season, he wasn't even there. So, I don't know. I, don't, I guess they're going to, you know, develop his character more in season three. And that was kind of a, like, taste of it. But I don't, I don't know. I'm not real interested in what they're doing with Diamond. I mean, I'm, I'll am i be open to seeing it in season three, but, eh. You know. I mean, Diamond is clearly going to be that hitter. Uh, he's going to clearly be the guy that uh, folks come to when they need somebody offed. I'm more interested in seeing how they're going to play uh, Big Bone. She that was, that was interesting to me. I, I actually liked seeing her kick his butt. Yeah, it was like some ninja shit almost. It was. I mean, I, I was like, night, that's a girl! It is. I mean, you can see the body <laughs> suit. Uh, so, you know, she got, you know, clearly, you know, hand to hand. She did her thing. The other guy came up, uh, you know, they zoomed in uh, on the ring. Uh, Montavious' rings, the guy that got killed previously uh, in the last season. Uh, so... Like There's going to be some come up Montavious. Who was that? That was the, uh, Montavious was the uh, boyfriend of someone. I think I got to go back and look at that again. I was looking at the... So maybe Big Bone is actually somebody associated with him? She's working with, with somebody that's associated with him, and she's there, I think, for them to try to get Diamond. Oh, like she that. was a plant? Yes, I think she was a plant. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So, that's so this happened. whole time, she was... Really working. I was thinking this was relative to the Keyshawn, but this mm. this ain't got nothing to do with Keyshawn. Yeah, Keyshawn. I mean, you know, Keyshawn was clearly on Diamond's mind, but Big Bone was doing a job. She was there to oh, get close. Oh, that's good. And again, you know, somebody that died in season one, this is the comeback. It's circling back now. You know what I'm saying? People don't just get killed. Without so was this one of the people that they killed in the strip club? 
I, I think it was. We're gonna probably have to go back and watch season one. Oh again. wow! Yeah. yeah, we gotta yeah. watch that. If again. you're watching this right now, um, you know, in the comments, you know, what I'm saying the connection with Montavious and Big Bone and and what happened with Diamond at the end of the show. Uh, you know, also, you know, the Pink is gonna be saved. Uh, you know, there's a new mayor in Chuck Lisa. I really thought Buddy was gonna win, and he lost. I love the fact that they switched that up. Cause you, didn't, end, yeah, you cause didn't see that coming. Yes, you you could not see that coming. I not. love that. That was almost scandalous the way that happened. It I, was. Uh, you know, the phone call was made. And you then, thought uh, he was talking to the dude, and he was actually talking to Mayor Woodbine. She's going to be phenomenal. I love yeah. her character. Yeah. I mean, she, she adds a comedic element to it. She I'm going to tell you. The chair. Uh, that was where hilarious. The, where the blessings reside from uh, earlier this season. <laughs> I'm still laughing at that right now to this day. It was hilarious. Uh, she is offering some, you know, comedic. Uh, she came touches. out there and stripped in front of that man's she and she's a campaign. Pastor. And she's a pastor. Uh, you know, it goes stripper. down in, in the whole town. The it whole does. town, it, it goes does. down. It does. There was no reason for her to fall out that seat, but she did. Uh, got up, of course, and straightened herself up. You know, this is the mayor of the town. And uh, there's going to be some good frolicking and some good shenanigans going on. Yeah. Uh, with Pastor Woodbine uh, as the mayor. Uh, and, and you know, of course, you know, old dude, you know, lost uh, the mayor's race. But he seems to have come up uh, because he's now the hot, he's a hot dude in the town now. All the ladies want him. Lord. And uh, his wife has to watch him be wanted. What do you think is going to happen with my favorite character since she's not dancing anymore? That's tough to say what's going to happen with Mercedes. She's opening up this gym. And it's going to have this pole fitness class. She's getting out of the strip game. Uh, part of it is going to be her trying to keep her daughter out of trouble since so she's got a daughter. Uh, part of it is going to be an interaction with Maine. She clearly wants that man. Uh, throw, yeah, she wants him. She wants him. She could have had him. She that was him. on the back porch. He was basically on the platter for it. She turned it down. She don't want him. Did you see the interaction when she came across the street? When she interacted, did that you see That was regular old nerdy neighborhood homie shit. Is that what you think? Yes, I know. It she was. Won't be, she won't. She won't. All right. We're going to see. We're going to see. If y'all are watching, put she, it in the comments. She could have had Mercedes him. If she man. wanted him, he won't her. She could have had him if she wanted him. Yes, you know, he might. He, he does well want might. her. He I'm sure well he might. wants her. Uh, but she, she, if she wanted him, she could have had him. I don't, I, I don't know what they gonna have to figure out some kind of way to get her on the pole. Like what they gonna do? I mean, it I mean, would be a waste to have her on the cast and she don't dance. All right. Well, clearly she's your favorite character, and you've been enamored with the dancing. I have as well. Uh, I mean, you know, we're just gonna keep it real. I got high real fast. What the hell? <laughs> My goodness. Babe, I think the air just went off. The, the air is on. <laughs> Stifle for yourself, woman. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Mercedes done got you hot under the collar here. I mean, she's fine, but you know, here's the thing: there's got to be some progression in the in the storyline now. So she got this gym, so something's gonna happen. I mean, of course, maybe at some point something's gonna happen. Somebody gonna get sick. They gonna have to have a you know the episode where they have the uh, the fundraiser to save somebody, and she gonna have to jump on the pole again and come back in to save the day. Uh, but you know, she got you know that shoulder issue. You know what I'm saying? She, she learned how to show. work the other arm. She's she fine on the shoulder issue. She did. Uh, I think she's trying to go to straight and narrow. I think she's trying to present, you know, a positive. Maybe you know, she'll start doing photographs. She seems enamored with the idea that you could actually get royalties from art. That was a lot of money, too. When I saw the check, I was like, God damn. How much was it? It was 30000 mm. And that was just a royalty check. Yeah, you had to look at the check. Though, you know what I'm saying? So, I, you know, I, I like to look at a lot of the smaller details because in these type shows, when you got good writers, you got to watch a lot of stuff. Yeah. Because they move and stuff you around. You can miss so. something. I miss yeah. a lot of stuff. That's why I watch them over and over again because yeah. I, I, I miss a lot of stuff. Yeah. Most of the time, I'm concentrating on one particular thing and it'd be five things happening in the seat. Yeah, the so, thing. Um, you know, it's interesting to see what's going to happen with her. Uh, interesting to see what's going to happen. With the casino as it comes in, uh, you know, in the episode before the finale, of course, you know, Uncle Clifford uh, and I forget his name, the light-skinned guy, uh, apparently came to some type of agreement 
Uh, and it was kind of funny as well because, uh, what's, what's my girl's name? The one that left? It's Autumn Haley or something. Autumn Haley, whatever her name is. She was so confident on that phone. Ooh, that She's been confident, confident for three, let me tell you, three episodes. She was confident that she was going to get that 10 million. First of all, when she first said it, I knew she wasn't going to get the 10 million. The white lady told her, I'm going to give you five. And that's it. And I think she was pretty adamant about that five the whole entire time. There was not any time that that lady wavered off of that five million. Mm -hmm. When you don't waver or say, let me think about it or let me give she you some good. No. She, didn't, she, she was already working on five plan million. B. So she said, you know, 10 million, you're going to give me 10 million. She went to Uncle Clifford and said, I'm finna get this 10 million. She thought she was finna cash out. And by the time she got on that phone in that season finale, when she was like, you know what? I'm feeling like 15. And I just thought to myself, this is finna turn out in no way like you think it's finna turn out. The mm -hmm. phone call when she was in the back of that thing, she was talking too calmly. And she was talking too slowly and methodically. Uh, you have missed the boat. And now, you know, there's a saying that Devin the Dude had in the song. It didn't have to do with money. He said... Uh, the P word actually, but you're fucking up, yo, for show, trying to get some more and end up with no, which is what happened. Yeah, should have took the five, should have took the five million, you cashed out, you'd have been gone. Uh, you know, who knows what happened to the pink at that time, but uh, you stuck around, you tried to get greedy, tried to get the 15. Uncle Clifford, uh, did an end around on you, literally, literally and figuratively, did an end around on you. And uh, got the club back. You got your money. You did steal that money from her, though, out of the account. She I'm, got her interest. She did get a little interest. Now, I'm trying to figure out why, when you gave her the check, you already knew that she was finna tell her to, you know, take this check and go on. And we're going to let you go because we didn't hear these bodies for you. So we got some on you. So go on, go. So at this point, when you know how this is coming out, how is she still able to have access to that account to take that money out. Because he, he left from that conversation and went to start planning a party. But the check was there. So when she came in, the check was in the drawer. He got the check out. He handed it to her. At that point, if you know what's happening, she should have been off the account before she even came to visit him at the bank to get that check. She should have been off the account. Well, running the business was the problem to begin with. Yeah, there, there, there was some. That's how she was able to get in there and get yeah. The footing that she got. In the first place. Yeah. In the first place. I don't think Uncle Clifford thought that out. Uh, you know, they did need that money to keep the bank open at first. During the pandemic, no less. Uh, but definitely not good housekeeping on that because she did get her interest and now she's gone. I've read, you know, articles where she's saying that her character is actually finna go from the show. She's gonna be gone. She may pop back back up at some point. You know, maybe you wanna check in what she's doing because she is pregnant with Andre's babies. So, Who was Andre? The dude that was running for mayor. His name just popped in my head. In real life? Oh, you're talking about on the show? On the show. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So she is pregnant. She's probably not going to keep it. Oh, maybe. Who, who knows what happened? But she's gone, disappeared. She's in the wind. And now, of course, the rule that is a real rule that you have to build a casino in Mississippi, of course. You got to build a casino on the water. And uh, they're going to run the river and they're going to run a canal up in between them folks' house so that they'll be able to have the uh, casino there. But the bank is still going to be there. And, uh, you know. Seems like everything's going to work out. Yeah. I mean, because when you go to the casino and you get drunk and you spend a lot of money and you make some money, where else are you going to want to go? To the bank. You're going to go to the bank and you're going to spend some money at the end of the day. And that's kind of where we left things off. For season two yeah. of uh, P Valley, uh, so we're gonna see if it's gonna be a season three. Uh, good entertainment, good writing. Shout out to Katori Hall and her team, and you know appreciate y'all of course for making sure that y'all had a lot of Mississippi music in season two. Uh, that was a big deal for folks in season one. It was a lot of Memphis music in there, but in season two, shouts out to uh, Polo Baby. Shouts out to uh, Young Jules. Shouts out to the artists in North Mississippi who got their songs on P-Valley for season two. Nice look, nice checks uh, to be a part of that. Uh, royalty checks come in for that. That'll be great for, for perpetuity, as they call it, 
on the contract. So shouts out to Tori Hall and her whole squad for making sure that you have some Mississippi music and some Mississippi representation in that man. So if uh, if you know if y'all have not seen season two of P Valley or the season finale. Uh, that was a bunch of spoilers we just gave you, so you pretty much know what's going to happen, but you probably should go back and watch it anyway. Once the show comes on on Sunday, uh, you know, you got 48 hours. That's the rule. You got 48 hours. And then if you haven't watched it in 48 hours, spoilers is coming. So there's that. But there was, incidentally, uh, a video that you watched, and I'm going to let you kind of set it up before we get into the conversation about uh, LL Cool J. Uh, in an interview that he was having uh, with Mike Tyson, who was a very interesting subject to interview, by the way. We saw him talking to Kevin Hart in season two of Heart to Heart. Uh, very interesting to interview him. But anyway, he was talking to, to LL Cool J, and uh, you sent me this, and I had seen it, but, uh, you know, it piqued your interest a little bit. So, you know, basically what was he talking about in the video? Actually, I sent it to you. I didn't watch it again after that. You did? Mm-mm. You did not? Mm-mm. Uh. Did you watch it? Yeah, I watched it. I'd already seen it. Already. Okay, actually. what so was when it you about? Sent it, so when you sent it to me, I thought you had, you had took a look at it. I was just going to let you, you know, take the lead on that and kind of jump in and, you know, and get us into the discussion. You know what I'm saying? You know, jazz it up a little bit. Anyway, basically, LL Cool J was saying that uh, men should not try to buy themselves into relationships. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this is coming back to you. That's what you took from that? Yeah, that's exactly what he was saying. Oh, I was I saying mean, that, that and, you know, Mike Tyson in the back talking about, yeah, yeah, I ain't doing that shit no more. I ain't doing that shit no more. So, basically, LL was saying that um, you go through the courting stage. Right. And you do your chivalry and buying things, flowers, candy, and things of that nature. <laughs> but dudes, he said, dudes are weak if they continue that throughout the relationship. I really wanted to see what you thought about that, which is why I sent it to you. Um, because I don't know that that is... Who are... Is he speaking on behalf of other men, or is, because I don't know that women feel that way? I, when I saw it, I, mean, I thought his stance was really strong uh, for someone who has been successful in the music business and in the acting world, and uh, you know has been with the same woman and married to the same woman since he got in the game. It seemed really weird. It's, it seemed almost like he was taking it from a personal stance. Uh, but I know that I know that you have not been with your wife as long as you have, and you know having the money and the success that you have had, you know without you know doting on your wife. So maybe he's talking about you know after being married. No, no, no. he's saying he's saying right. if you aren't married, it's okay for married men. Ah, I got you. Yeah, got you. he's saying you. if you, you aren't married and you're in a relationship with someone and you are continu continuously showering her with gifts and materialistic things and money mm. that it's weak because it's not giving I don't want to speak for him and I really don't remember specifically what he said but I think what he said was it's not giving she's not seeing you or falling for you yeah, she's, not falling being for, she's falling for the money and the gifts Yeah, yeah. and then one day you're going to end up if you're ever not able to provide those things what does she then you have to be you, and she don't know you at that point. Right. She may not even like you. Right. She just like what you provide. Right. And I don't know, is that a rich I, people I, thing? I, I think, I mean, I think it's accurate in a sense, especially in this day and age of, you know, women saying you got to pay me and you got to do this. And, you know, guys, you know, talking about how much money they spending and flying women out and they tricking money off here and tricking money off over there. Uh, I think it's still something that's relevant. I think what he says has merit. I don't think it makes you weak per se, but I, I do think what it does is, is, you know, it's the dating stage. So in a lot of instances, you are seeing the representative of the person that you're dating and you're not seeing the actual person. They're in an, I got to impress you stage at that point. But I know plenty of women who do that. Yeah. They they do the gift buying and the showering and I bought him this and I bought him that. 
And then when it runs out, you know, you got, there's a scene in Teen Wolf that I think about and thinking about this instance, there's a scene in Teen Wolf where uh, Michael J. Fox's character decides that he wants to go play the basketball game as himself. Mm -hmm. And his buddy Styles tells him, uh, I don't know how to put this to you, but no one wants you. They want the wolf. Yeah. And that's kind of the instance in this deal because once you have showered these women or these men with these gifts and if something happens or, you know, you get married or you got to roll over and you got to see them, in the, you know, look them in the eyes, you know, in the morning or, you know, in the light of day or whatever the case is and the gifts are not there, then what is there for you to hold on to? As a person who likes gifts mm -hmm. but doesn't need them, mm -hmm. I will say this. Um, it depends on where the intention is coming from. So if you are giving a gift from deep down in yourself because you love this person, you saw this thing and you want them to have it. Right. I think that's a different type of uh, experience than I'm going to buy her this and she's going to love me because of it. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to buy this because she ain't never had it and I'm going to be flossing and people, she's going to look at me different. She's going to think I'm, I'm the shit because I bought this thing. Like, I think that really matters because if you're buying a gift, you got the money to do it. You're not putting yourself in a hardship. If you're buying the gift because there's a place in you who really that really wants her to have it and that you think she'll appreciate it, I think that's fine. I think LL is saying you can't do too much of that because you're, I don't know, setting up some sort of false thing about what's happening within the relationship and who she's falling for. I don't I, think that's fair. I don't know if that's, you think that's fair? I think it's fair. He just came across real strong. He came across super passionate about it. And here's my theory. I don't have anything to go on on this. You know, if you followed LL Cool J's career, LL Cool J thinks very highly of his looks. Mm -hmm. Ladies love Cool James. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, licking his lips. Uh, he, he feels as if he's a really good looking dude. Mm -hmm. and, and part of that spiel that he was given, he was saying, you know, there's no sex appeal in that and you trying to buy the woman. He feels like, you know, I look like I look. You should want me because I look good and I'm sexy and you attracted to me, not just because you attracted to my money. That's what he's saying. <laughs> I think Dang, you're probably right. I think that's what he's saying. But in a sense, in the arrogance of that statement, there has to be some level of attraction that you have to have to the person that you're dating. Even if they're doting on you with gifts, there's got to be something there. That ain't true. I'm saying that there needs to be something there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, that's true. I don't want you to, you know. Because uh, people will take gifts all day long and not give a flying frisbee uh, about the person. I want to be perfectly honest with you, and I, and I put this post up, and I think uh, I asked this at the Love and Life uh, event, by the way. For those of you that are just kind of following Kaz and Queen, we do an event every year where we have a panel of, of people on the dating spectrum and the marriage spectrum called Love and Life. Uh, if you are subscribed to this channel, or if you go to our YouTube channel, uh, you'll be able to see the last Love and Life. You know, we have a lot of panelists on here and we talk about different things. But I was saying to the Love and Life panel that, you know, there are actually people that are actually married and have been married for years that I think the woman is not attracted to the man. Sure. Or sexually attracted to the man. Absolutely. The man is a provider. The man financially. But vice versa, though. The same thing go for men. Same thing in a sense, and I'm because I'm a man. In a sense, I'm using it. You know, I'm a man. You think that you? I think the incidence of women being married to men that they are not sexually attracted to is way above the incidence of men being married to women. I don't know, baby. I don't, I don't think. I think you. I think you could raise that up a little bit. It's probably fifty fifty. Sixty forty. I use sixty forty. I would sixty forty. I say fifty fifty. Okay, let's just say 50-50. I'm not going to argue with you. Okay, so um, your point is? My point is, there has to be a level, uh, for me, for it to work. You got to, got it has to be a level of physical attraction. How can you be, and I'm asking you as a woman, because mm -hmm. I know for me, 
you know, it, it you have to be attracted, and there has to be some. It's got to be some tingle in your body when sure. you see them. Absolutely. Um, there are women out there that are married to men who are, you know, financially secure. They got good jobs. They living in good houses and that thing. And they get up every day and look at their man, and nothing about that man makes their body tingle. Their nether regions don't tingle. They're not sexually attracted. But that ain't necessarily true. They may not be sexually history. attracted to them, but there's enough there for them to be attracted enough. How can you be married to someone you are not sexually attracted to? I, I'm I'm trying to figure that out. I know it happens. I mean, women but, women can can get away with faking being sexually attracted to a man and even having sex with him, and they don't even know that they're not. She's not sexually attracted to him if they know what they're doing. It happens all the time. That's possible. It just depends on the mental state of the woman. Like the woman who is being kept and doesn't have any money problems and living the type of life she wants to live and he stay out of her way. And, you know, if it works for her, she could she could easily have sex with him and him not know that she's not attracted to him. So for you, um, looking at me every day. Baby. Uh, I'm absolutely attracted to you. Like, that would never be a problem I for mean, me. I mean, well, let's just start off by saying, I mean, if you're looking at me now on YouTube, uh, or if you looked at any of my social media pages, clearly, obviously, uh, I'm dashing. Uh, so, you know, first of all, you know, that had to be one of the first things that you saw. You yes, know, when we baby. Up, it was. It was my looks. Yes, absolutely. And the tingle. In your nether regions as well. The tingle in the nether regions that I still feel today. I feel them right now. Do you? Yeah. You should. Uh, <laughs> you should feel them in your nether I regions. I do. I feel them right now. Can't you tell? Mm, I, no, but... <laughs> <laughs> but they there. I know they there. Uh, so, you know, there's that. I'm but, not uh, one of those women, though. Sex is important to me. That's so, my thing. So is is sex not important to these women? Because what's happening? You'd be what's surprised happening with your... how many how many women are not really necessarily into sex. I don't know sure. how that happens because that has not been my life experience ever. Right. But there are a lot of women who are just not into sex. They they do it because it's what you do, you know, on holidays and birthdays and, and Valentine's Day. Yeah, they could take it or leave it. And right. I don't know if there's, like, something traumatic happened in your life or something at some point or some sort of abuse. I'm not saying that that's how it always shows up, but, you know, trauma does tend to sway people on how they become. Uh, or maybe they just not into it. I don't know. But there are a lot of women who could take or leave sex. That's crazy. Or it could take it once a year or three times a year. I know. It's a lot of people on my timeline. I'm not going to really get into depth, but, I mean, you know, I, I don't see how in, in any sense, ma'am, that that guy is turning you on. I don't see you rolling over well, like that. Also, at the same time, so though, pipe me down. You don't, we don't get to determine what turns people on. Yeah, that's true. So, so. they could be turned on by... Something that we that's not a physical thing. Turned on thing. by the gifts and the trips. Or the intelligence. The mental state. A lot of women yeah. are attracted to very smart guys. There's a lot a of women are. It is that. a word. A word for that. Yeah. And there's people who are attracted to small guys, tall guys, large guys. You know, we don't just because you don't see what the attraction is doesn't mean the attraction doesn't fair. exist. I guess that's fair. But I will say that. You know, LL Cool J does have a point because you definitely want to present yourself. You want the person that you're with to love you for you and to be attracted to you for you. Yes. If uh, that's his point, I agree. Yeah. I mean. I don't know how that's weak. That's the problem I struggle yeah, with. Yeah, I don't know. But I do agree with that, that point. Uh, you know, I, I did it. and I guess had, he's we saying it's weak it. in that you don't have to put in any work. Yeah. To spend money. I guess that I guess that makes sense at the end of the day. I mean, I you know, again, when we were dating and we were courting, uh at any time that, you know, I was dating or meeting women in, you know, my single life, that was a big part of it. I wanted to see and want to know if they were with me for me. 
and not because of the celebrity that they felt that I had, you know, whether it, you know, have been just, you know, in my state or the regional level, uh, or they were with me, you know, for what they thought might be some type of materialistic gain. So what was the thing that proved to you that I was with you for you? You never asked me for anything hmm. in the courting stage. I barely ask now, now. I mean, yeah, that's kind of the person you are, but I'm going to tell you, and I told all of my kids this, and I told you this too, and I mean it, and it may sound crazy, and you guys are hearing it for the first time out there. If you had asked me to give you some money, like on a bill or something. Oh, you, you told first, me that. In the first month. He told me dating, that. Yeah. If he didn't asked, tell me why we were dating, but after it was a oh, man. Sig I was waiting significant to see if it was relationship, happen. I was waiting to see what was going to happen. And we decided that we were going to be together. He actually told me that if you had asked me for some money for a bill, I wouldn't have. We would that would have stopped it. It would have been over right there. It'd been a smoke bomb. You would have looked <laughs> around. It would it would have been smoke. I'd have I'd have I'd have bounced up out of that like. So what would that have said to you? That would have said that, that I was going to go to, yeah, that you trying What to if get I actually there? needed help? Yeah. Wasn't gonna be for me, not at that point. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Not at that point. Not in the courting stage. Now, once the statement was made definitively that we are together and we are a couple, and that statement was made, was it not? Yeah. After a while, after yeah. the courting stage, at that point, then boom, the clock resets. And at that point, then we ended together. So what was happening then at that time, I was part of it fully in and fully evolved, and we went through our journey together at that point. But I had to be sure that you were there for me. And you were there at a stage where, yeah, you had to be there for me if you were going to be there for me because there wasn't shit else there at the time. So, <laughs> yeah, um, if you had asked for bill money, if you had asked for anything in that first month, first couple of weeks, and I've known dudes who have dated where that happened, uh, then for we wouldn't sure. even be together. I'd have been gone. I'd have immediately left. Like, it, it just, you know, for me, that's just, really, for me, it's too soon. If you date somebody and you within a month of dating them and you ask them for some money, that's too soon. That depends on what you're doing. It depends on what you're doing. But, see, I get we were, it. You came in into a, in my life during a time where I had a whole roster. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what you was going to do. Mm -hmm. I was just going with the flow of things. Mm -hmm. But my thought process was that you was just going to be one of them. Yeah. So that's how that's that fair. happens. I think that's where we both were at that particular time. We didn't know what was going to happen. It's really weird, though, because I didn't, I had not placed you until, you know, usually, ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Usually, you know exactly where you're going to fit these, this person when they come into the fold. I had not placed you. And then I look up and we were together. Right. I, so shot up, I shot up the charts real fast. I'm talking about with a bullet. You I did, dropped, baby. I dropped that album, and it went straight to the top of the charts immediately. <laughs> it, was a, it was a hit. It went viral right off the top. That's what I've been telling you about your manifestation power, because you manifested that. You made it I happen. I mean, well, you know, I told you the very first time I saw you that I was going to marry you. So, you, you know, did. that was it. Uh, and I believed you then. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing. I believed you shot, when you said shot it. right up to the top of the charts there, and the roster was gone. And that speaks to the roster issue, ladies and gentlemen. If you date somebody and they got a roster, if you're trying to move up, you know, there are ways for you to move up and get the roster fired. Get the entire roster clean can it be out. fired. Can clean and it you out. Can clear out the whole squad if you on top of your shit, if that's where you want to be. So, yep. you know, in most instances, you know, back in that day, if you was dating either one of us, you know, there was a roster mm -hmm. of people, a long roster. You had to work your way up the charts. Yep. Uh, to get to the top there, but you know, uh, shout out to LL Cool J, of course. Uh, you know, just off the Rock the Bells performance, but uh, talking to Mike Tyson. If you hadn't had a chance to see that man, make sure you go and check that out, and make sure that you subscribe again to the YouTube channel. All right, uh, and check out all the content that we got because there's more content coming along. A lot of good stuff coming along. Make sure that you uh, follow us on Spotify. Make sure you follow us on all streaming services. Uh, the past episode that we had, uh, one of the most downloaded, all right? We had the previous one. It had the most views on YouTube. And the last episode uh, was one of the most downloaded. Irv Gotti was the 
the hot topic oh. of the week. We're well, glad uh, you said that because I was about to say, what we talked about? Yeah, everybody was the hot topic of the week. So you guys have been downloading podcasts. So, you know, we're slowly just pushing along, man. We just want to. And they've been, you guys have been really, really good too about hitting us up in the messages and inbox and stuff. And so I would like to suggest that if you have any shows, because we like to watch good shows and then have discussions about them and, you know, evaluate them and have, you know, bring them to the podcast. So if you have any shows that you think we should watch, especially binge, I love binging. So if you have anything good that we should watch that and then have a conversation about, chime in and let us know what that is too. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, again, these are conversations that take place in our home between a husband and wife. And uh, sometimes they're funny, sometimes they're deep, sometimes, uh, you know, they're introspective. Uh, sometimes we take, uh, you know, our own personal experiences and put it into it. So we felt like uh, you guys might find that interesting. And yeah. uh, if you do, make sure you share this with somebody, man, to keep uh, following the podcast and the show, man. And we appreciate y'all for doing that. All right. But on that note, and with that being said, I am Kaz. And I'm Queen. And this is episode 10 of According to Kaz and Queen, man. All right. We're going to check you guys out next time. Peace and power.